Okay, I'm gonna do a short video here on something I learned, which I guess makes sense now after the fact. Anyways, I've always referred to these as carbon gear brakes since carbon gears, I think Type 3's had disc brakes, but you could take the uh, carbon gear spindles and put that on your bug if it had ball joints. We're of course dealing with the Super Beetle. But anywho, so what I went and did, when done did, is I got these adapter brackets from a place called SIP1. It's a California Imports 1. I don't know, I guess they're like U2 fans or something. Anyways, it came from Canada. I just couldn't figure that out why mine got shipped from Canada. But oh well. So these nice countersunk screws came with it. It didn't come with the screws for the calipers. The calipers I got it when I bought some rims for this bug that seemed like they were never going to be done. Well, I sandblasted them and cleared them. And the clear coat made them darker than I liked. So I started all over again. So now I'm going to try and find some silver paint that looks like aluminum and spray them. Well, anywho, you got to take that off. And put this on, I'll show you that in a moment. Also, I was able to reuse the brake line. I ran it behind the strut. I'll go over the other side since I haven't taken it apart yet. And go over that. And there's one thing I wish I would have done. And I'll show you a trick you can do for more braking power. If you don't have time to uh, get the fancy rear disc brakes too. So here's your stock setup with your speedometer cable that goes through the cap, which is kind of odd. Volkswagen specifically crazy. Oh, there might be other cars. It's like a motorcycle. The damn speedometer runs off the wheel. So anywho, remove those four bolts. You can see how the brake line used to be. And like I said, to get it to where it's, I've seen people stretch it this way along the front, but I just took it off and right behind the strut. Anywho, I'm gonna put a, somewhere in there, up in there. I'm gonna put the stock master solder back on, a new one. But what I could have done, if I would have been thinking, I also bought rear brakes, so I'll show you what they look like for no apparent reason. I also bought rear brakes, but what I should have done, and I'd have to take these apart to make sure, but I'm pretty well 100% sure they would work is what I should have done instead of buying rear wheel cylinders that are I think 17 millimeter I should have bought front wheel cylinders and stuck on the back which are 19 millimeter it would actually have put more pressure on the brake shoes the stock master cylinder is also 19 millimeters which I'm putting back on but I should have got the 20.5 or 0.6 when they say sell for disc brake kits full disc brake kits and I should have done that. Um, in the past, what I've done on a sand rail, there's the uh, thing or type 3 brakes. And that's because, like, these fronts would be cool if you could swap these on the back because they're maybe 5 to 10 millimeters thicker. I'd have to look, should look them up. But, anyways, the, um, I think it's about, I think these are about 30 millimeter. The, uh, and I think the, uh, if I remember right, the thing brakes are 40 millimeters, so they're pretty massive. So, and but the putting thing or type three brakes on the back of a bug requires a type three or modifying, like I did, a backing plate from a, something like a type three. I know the holes were off. I had to redrill and weld them and all sorts of blowing. But anyways, and then the wider drums, which sometimes you have to. Either cut the snout of the drum off or add a spacer depending on if you put it on an IRS or swing hook. So anyways, and then I ran the bus like 2022 20, with a built-in reservoir. And that was a, one time I had a sand rail. Even though it only had rear brakes, it had some massive stopping power and the steering brake worked awesome. If I did that on this, unless I don't know how well the disc would work, it would uh, probably be rear brake too much rear brake bias so um first time i ever put disc brakes on any of my volkswagens in 30 years and it's funny because 
the Super Beetle is the only time I've ever had a bug that really sort of stopped. It wasn't like new car great, but my 67 would not stop worth a darn. And I had a 2 liter in that thing that pumped out pretty good power, so it made it even scarier. But anyways, I'll walk around. i got to take the rear wheel off because I was lazy and only did half the brakes when the... Uh, Emergency brake cable snapped one day, and I thought it was the rear brakes, and then when I found out it was the cable, I uh, only changed one cable. As you can tell how shiny stuff is back here, and I don't know if you can tell from there to here. These shoes look like they were actually brand new. I don't know why the rear brakes were done, the fronts were never done, and they didn't change the damn broken cable. The cables are horrible on this thing, I don't know why you wouldn't have changed them. But they also didn't change the shocks, so this thing would, uh, buck and slide all over the freeway so anywho yeah the only difference you know this looks different because the other one's the mounting bolt was this way but same thing it's one bolt so i'll probably recycle these for i think about building a pan buggy like since from mad max because i got so many belly pans and transmissions piling up but anywho yeah i could have swapped in bigger wheel cylinders I could have swapped in a bigger master cylinder and I probably could have really improved the braking power of this but I guess you guys can learn from my mistakes so is there anything else I don't think so so let's just call that see ya